Hi there, Darcy Spears here at KTNV in Las Vegas, being joined by Brian Ross of ABC's Network Investigative Unit. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. We've been working with you and your team on this project on air ambulances, the bills, the lawsuits, the headache and the heartache that accompanies them. What have you uncovered that really stands out here as, as kind of the most egregious aspect of this healthcare system? <clears throat> Well, this is a company, Air Methods, that operates across the country. Uh, they are operating as if they're an airline under federal law because they're considered like United or Delta Airlines. And under the law, no state agency can regulate what price they charge. So they're free to charge any price they want, and they're very aggressive about it. We've seen bills up to fifty-five, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 for a helicopter trip to the hospital. Uh, people unaware of how much it's going to cost. They're asked to sign a consent form that makes them fully and personally responsible. It doesn't, it doesn't pr list the price at all. And so again and again, people, as you say, are getting the headache and the heartache when the bill arrives. And these are people in an emergency situation who have no choice. They're often not even involved in the discussion about how they're going to be transported. Is the fact that these air ambulance helicopter companies are considered airlines under deregulation, is that a loophole? It's a giant loophole. People are very vulnerable when this decision is made. And who's going to say if the doctor says I've got to have it, I've got to have it, or my loved one uh, wants a helicopter ride and needs it, I'll say yes, but we're never told the price. That's what turns out to be one of the problems. But the loophole is now being addressed by some in Congress who say these companies should not be uh, governed or regulated as if they're an airline. That's just not accurate. And certainly air airline customers have a choice who they fly, when they fly, whether they right. fly. Um, and people in an emergency situation could be looked at as vulnerable in terms of being willing to pay or agree to anything to save their lives and their families too. So how do we balance the sticker shock with the flip side of, you know, you can't put a price on life-saving care? Well, you actually you narrowed it down right to its uh, nub. That's really the issue here. If this is such an important public utility and so important, and 400,000 people a year are given uh, helicopter medevac flights, perhaps a for-profit company with a monopoly is not the best way to go. A for-profit company that is barely regulated in terms of how, what it can charge. Uh, all these lawsuits, the debts, the liens on homes, people going to bankruptcy, that shouldn't happen after this kind of treatment. The woman that we spoke to here in the Las Vegas area, who like so many people across the country, had to be transported to a major city from an outlying area. She's been paying her bill down for more than a year and still owes nearly $40,000. When you spoke Absolutely. with Air Methods, how, how do they arrive at a bill? It, it started at almost 47. Insurance kicked in a few bucks. But a year later, yeah. she's still paying, and it's almost 39 grand. We heard the same description, the same case across the country. Person after person found the same situation. And what the company says is, well, the actual cost is probably only about $10,000, but we jack up the price for people who have insurance uh, because we get paid a low reimbursement uh, by the government for the poor and the elderly, Medicare and Medicaid. So the average person with insurance is going to get stuck with a much higher bill that far exceeds the actual cost, and the insurance companies simply won't reimburse for what they consider to be an excessive charge. That allows the helicopter companies to then, since they call balance billing, bill the patient or the customer for the balance of the bill. So if in fact this is an excessive charge and health insurance companies and our own government are, are saying this by way of what they're willing to reimburse, how come it's allowed to excessively charge people this way outside of the they, whole they, deregulation thing? Is that just what they hide any under? Any other aspect, right, any other aspect of medical care would come under some kind of uh, insurance commission regulation, state regulation, not the air ambulance business. They are treated like an airline as if it's United Airlines and no one is allowed to tell them what they can charge. Of course, as you point out, uh, customers don't have a choice if you're uh, needed to be emergency evacuated, you don't have a choice about to pick your right helicopter company. Generally, hospitals make deals with one company, and they're free to charge whatever they want, and the hospitals often unaware of the kind of debt uh, they're putting on their patients. They are a for-profit company. Is it inappropriate for them to pursue collection methods the way other for-profit companies do? Well, they say they have to do that to stay in business. 
but we talked with the people who run a nonprofit helicopter service in the Dallas area, and they say they never take their patients to court. They never put debt collectors on them. They just don't do that. So there are different ways to operate than the way that Air Methods is operating. But yes, they legally have the right. Uh, people have signed these consent forms unaware of the cost, and they're stuck. And you heard the woman we interviewed who was a heart attack victim say she almost had another heart attack when she okay. received that bill and she believes she's going to be paying on it until she's dead. That's a sad it's state of sad. affairs. It really is. And we've heard the same kind of tale across the country in state after state from local station to local station. These people are up in arms about it. There's a kind of sky rage over it, but there's not much that can be done about it. Uh, some answer may have to come out of Washington, but so far no one has found that answer. Well, Brian, we want to thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, we hope that your work and our work on this very important issue forces the hands of insurance commissioners, Congress, anybody who can regulate this and protect consumers moving forward uh, when it comes to, you know, necessary life-saving care. Well, thank you so much. Uh, your contribution from your station was very important in our overall reporting, and thank you again for doing it. Good work. Thank you very much.